How's everyone doing? Good? Excellent. Hey, thank you uh, so much for, for coming. I need to watch the time because I tend to uh, lose track of the time and Dave will get anxious. So thanks. First of all, thank you all for coming to the OpenStack Summit. Okay, I remember back um, when you know, we had our first set of conferences, 2011, even before that. And I used to say it was uh, you know, a dog, a pigeon, a parakeet, and a couple of developers, right? And that was pretty much OpenStack. And you know, hats off to the Rackspace folks, Rackspace folks for you know, understanding that to truly grow an ecosystem, to create a community, to, to uh, empower users, right? Developers, operators, right? Uh, you really kind of have to create an open foundation, right? And uh, I'm presenting today with uh, Dave Linquist, who's over here. Uh, by the way, I'm Angel Diaz. I'm with IBM. Uh, and Dave is, is, is also with IBM. Uh, Dave is uh, our IBM fellow for cloud technologies. And, and I uh, have responsibility for all the things that we do around open source and standards, as well as our cloud performance uh, labs out in Silicon Valley. Uh, but I remember, Dave, when uh, you and I and Todd and some of us here in the front uh, met with Rackspace back in uh, the 2011-ish time frame and said, you know, there's a lot of stuff going on, right? If you look at Eucalyptus Cloud Stack, right? I mean, do you guys, you guys ever hear of those things before? Do you still think about them? <laughs> Probably not, no. Um, and, and, and what we wanted to do was to see if we can, you know, take something which is good code, great people, great community, and explode it out and try to get a de facto infrastructure uh, as a service platform. I mean, that was our objective, right? It was very, very clear. And, and, then, and then what happened was, as I'm sure a lot of you know who've been involved in this for a while, like us, uh, you know, it started with a humble small group of founding sponsors to try to stand up this organization. Jonathan was, was so, so kind to take over the executive sponsorship role, which, by the way, he gets well compensated for. And, <laughs> but, you know, we created a, a, a wonderful community, and, and the rest is history. I mean, here we are uh, with yet another summit, another great location. Hong Kong was, was our last one. And, and we're, you know, upwards of 5,000 or so folks at this event, at an open source conference, right? It's, it's, uh, it's, it's simply amazing. So what I was hoping uh, we could accomplish uh, in, in the next, uh, I think we have like 40 minutes or so, is to kind of give you a historical perspective of, of where we've been with OpenStack, but I think perhaps more importantly, uh, where we as a community and where we IBM and where our clients view this heading. Uh, there's a couple of dimensions that I think that are kind of really important uh, to understand, and, and that certainly reflects where we are doing a lot of our work. Uh, in, in OpenStack. We're very, very active, as, as you'll see. Uh, and then also try to introduce um, some concepts that are really important for the application side of the house. Right? We always talk about DevOps and we talk about the importance of developers and, and folks who do operations, but there is an equivalent kind of renaissance occurring in the application space, which is very, very synergistic and important to those of us who think about infrastructure or data centers, right? We are providing to the application people foundational technology, compute, storage, network, but it doesn't stop there, right? Why not provide data stores, messaging, all kinds of other types of reusable components, which then application folks can develop in this so-called polyglot world that they live in, right? And be quicker and faster about what they do their business. There are open communities coming together there. So that's, when you, when you kind of read the abstract to this, we talked about kind of the new additional members to the band. I like to spend kind of half of this time talking about that. What are some of the technologies that are very synergistic? Because a lot of the original band members that helped kind of push along and fund and create and enable all of you in this ecosystem are doing the same thing at the platform layer. And I'm real proud of that, and I'd like to talk a little bit about that as well, and some of the importance of these things working together. So that's kind of what we got planned. Is that okay? I can change it. 
We had the NFL draft, right? I'm happy to talk about that. I am a Washington Redskins fan. I know, I'm sorry. But, but uh, if you, we, can, we can change topics. You okay with that? All right, we'll go. So first thing, um, what is amazing to me is, is that when, when we ask our CIOs, and uh, we're going to have to bear with this thing flickering back and forth. I don't know what's going on, but don't pay attention to the screen. Just pay attention to me. See? Watch my hands. Got it? Okay. Um, <laughs> when you, uh, we can go without charts if this is a problem. All right. So uh, he told me to change charts. No? All right. I'll continue. When, when you talk to, uh, when we talk to our CEOs and we do surveys and folks understand what, you know, how our clients are thinking, what they're doing, we should all feel really good. Because for the past couple of years, technology, uh, and in particular, what's happening in the open communities is driving what they're doing. And then when you kind of look at the urgency that they have, right, in terms of how fast they need to adopt these new technologies, like OpenStack, the majority of folks understand that the urgency is either past them, right, or they have to do it now. And that's why this conference we're so focused at users and case studies, right? You heard in the main tent today. It's all about what folks are doing with the technology. There is a small percentage, I think four to five, that don't believe that they need to be worried about anything. <laughs> I, I don't want to be those people, <laughs> right? But, but that's kind of how this, this breaks down. And the phenomenon of how we are all as a community developing code, not just in OpenStack, but all the open source projects that are dependencies and related to us here in OpenStack, is very similar to what happened uh, in, in the early, early 90s, but a uh, very different set of things. So back in the early 90s, just to draw a couple of analogies, there was a big focus on creating the web around open technologies and participating and collaborating. But there was literally a handful of people doing that, right? Um, and for the most part, end users weren't really involved. <laughs> now, there are little, thousands of people doing it, and the end users are first class citizens. That's really, really important. It is, it is really important that for us as open communities to uh, build the right software for the people using it, the end users need to be involved uh, in a first class way. Now, yes, these are beautiful charts. It's too bad you're not seeing them. So that's, that's all right. Um, oh, there you go. You can see it briefly. Okay, It looks nice. So what? Um, Going back to uh, what I was saying about this de facto open source infrastructure as a service platform, uh, as a community, we were really focused on trying to bring together anyone who thought about this, right? So when we were, we IBM were thinking about what was going on, you know, Dave was leading a team that had something called high scale, low touch, really, really fast infrastructure as a service technology, which we were trying to debate what to do with. Should we open it up? Should we create our own thing? Well, you know, between now, then and now, we've contributed a lot of that intellectual property probably, but also code where appropriate into OpenStack. It was the right thing to do. Our partners did the same. And I think the, uh, when you look at metrics, and that's what this graph showed you, of other infrastructure as a service communities like Eucalyptus or CloudStack or other things, in terms of vibrancy of the population, uh, in terms of code commits, et cetera, by far, OpenStack is uh, the most active, hands down. And, and, and that's something we should all be very proud of. Uh, that's something, I'm just taking pictures of me in an empty screen. <laughs> I'll pose for you. That's something we should all be very, very proud of. Uh, and specifically, uh, you know, uh, for us in IBM, who've been steadily growing our participation. So the next chart that you're not seeing is a beautiful roadmap chart. Just kind of picture this in your head. But it starts back in 2011, when, or 2012, when we helped start the foundation. And IBM had literally one core contributor, uh, a couple of technical contributors, right? No blueprints, right? We were earning our stripes. In fact, we were helping quite a bit in the uh, testing aspects of this, as well as the, uh, as well as the internationalization. But like any other open community, you know, although you help stand up a foundation, if you want to have influence, you need to contribute. You need to show your value. You need to grow. Uh, so steadily, from release to release to release, 
and this is on this picture you're not seeing, our contributions have been growing. And the different focus areas, oh, there it is, this is beautiful. The different focus areas of where we have contributed, contributed over time uh, has been growing to the point now where we've got about, for Icehouse, 14 core contributors, 99 technical contributors, a bunch of commits, tons of blueprints and projects, right? And, and you know, kind of we're in the top three in terms of contributing to, to, to the OpenStack world. So we're very proud to be doing that. Um, but what I'm even more excited about is to say, you know who's number one? You guys have a guess who's number one? The individual contributor is number one, okay? The number of individual contributors make up the, the large percentage of code, right? And that is a healthy ecosystem. It's not some single vendor like us or someone else doing all, it's, it, it's all of you. So thank you. So we're at the Ice House release. Um, I, I think at this point it's fair to say uh, from an open source infrastructure as a service perspective, OpenStack is simply unstoppable. Um, I, I don't think, <clears throat> I don't know if Jonathan will say that, but I will say it for him. Uh, it is simply unstoppable. Uh, the amounts, we continue to have more contributions in the code. Uh, the individual membership has increased dramatically. Again, these are end users who are fanatics, who are writing code on top of their day job is increasing. And you know, that little project, Todd, that, that we started on translation has grown to, you know, 16, yeah, not, nine, nine, nine primary languages. So, so you know, it's, it's amazing uh, kind of where this has gone. So with that, I'm gonna hand it over to Dave, and I think the charts are working now, so you're all set. And we'll get into a little bit about uh, specifically what we've been up to, all right? Dave. Thanks, Angel. Um, in particular this morning, I, I really enjoyed the discussions in the keynote with the super users. I mean, w listening to the super users talk about what are some of the critical things to them in OpenStack, in particular, the operations making the system more robust, uh, the developer experience, how can we accelerate the delivery and support the delivery of applications, and the hybrid models. How can we really make OpenStack come to life in hybrid clouds with the interoperability and the ability to source uh, services, resources across clouds, across the internet? Now, starting with what Jonathan and Glenn from Wells Fargo discussed, they really put an emphasis on operations. They really put an emphasis on what was happening, particularly in Icehouse, with, with operations. And collectively in the community, I was really pleased to see that focus. And then the, then the emerging focus on the developers. And IBM, along with the community, some of the key areas that we really focused on from an operations perspective were just basic services like notification uh, for ops, for metering, monitoring, audit trails, uh, high availability, um, upgrades, how do you do live upgrades? all pieces that are core to enterprises and service providers alike to provide a robust, open cloud platform. So that has been our focus the last couple of releases and it'll continue to be the focus uh, for the community for the foreseeable future. And this is critical to accelerating the adoption and deployment of OpenStack. Now, equally critical is the role OpenStack plays in accelerating the delivery of applications, of new applications, of new business processes, of new business models, and the tools that will emerge around this open ecosystem. If you consider what's going on in businesses across all industries around the world, what you'll see is that these businesses are leveraging mobility to extend their reach to their customers, to their partners, to their employees. They're pulling in social um, mechanisms, social applications to create very compelling interactions. And they're using big data and business analytics to really understand the behavior of communities and the behavior of their customers. What they're trying to do is understand 
what opportunities exist? What are some of the weaknesses? What are some of the new opportunities? That's what's going on with the analytics. And so why speed has become so critical is really the basics of business. Can I recognize what's happening in the market? Can I bring my idea, my new business application, my new business process to market faster than my competitors? Can I test the market? Can I understand if I'm achieving those business outcomes? If I'm achieving those business outcomes, iterating through that cycle to achieve those outcomes, then can I begin to scale this application? Then can I begin to monetize, support, et cetera, this new, this new application, this new business process? That's why the tools building up around OpenStack for the developers are so critical. Tools like Bluemix, a recent announcement that we've had in IBM, which leverages an open source community, Cloud Foundry, where we can rapidly compose services to build applications, compose application services, messaging services, data services, development tools, test tools, as well as management systems. Here, this composition allows us to very rapidly, allows developers to very rapidly put an environment together, deliver an application in market in minutes, test, test the market with their applications, understand if they're achieving the, that business outcome, iterate till they start moving towards that, that, that business outcome. To complement the Bluemix system, Bluemix, we, we have DevOps services, a full life cycle from design, dev, test, right into production with the management systems. These are delivered as a service. These components are composable into the Bluemix environment so you can have collaborative dev. You can have builds, the test, promotion, managing your application artifacts, as well as a management system for application performance management, for uh, workload automation, uh, for control desk, for asset management, et cetera, come together within this composable environment. And that management system part is, is uh, referred to as service engage. I strongly encourage you to go out to um, test out and try out Bluemix. It's open beta right now. It's very compelling environment to use. Uh, it's, it's free. And I think I'd be very impressed as a developer how these environments come together in this composition. Now, taking a moment to reflect on hybrid clouds from a business perspective, what I'd like you to think about is not hybrid necessarily just from sourcing of clouds from the infrastructure, but think about it in the context of what we just went through in the application space and how to rapidly deliver applications to market. What's happening in hybrid is really how can I begin to leverage the APIs, the services, the API economy that exists to rapidly pull together new applications? Where these services opened up through these APIs are available across the internet, across clouds. How can I rapidly compose the runtimes, the environment I need to run my application, again, with services that are running across clouds? And then how can I consume or compose the resources I need from compute, storage, and networking at the infrastructure layers? That's what we mean by a dynamic cloud. That's what we mean by a composable business. That's the outcome that businesses are trying to achieve is how can I rapidly leverage APIs, services, infrastructure across the internet, across clouds to create this hybrid environment. Now, open technologies like OpenStack are absolutely critical to pulling this off. To me, it's the only way this will be pulled off is through these open standards and open source. OpenStack is a critical layer at that infrastructure layer critical at the abstraction of the underlying compute storage networking. Then the next layer, elements like the platform as a service layer, this is where open foundations like Foundry, Cloud Foundry are so important. This is where we can begin to create the composition of services in an open fabric running on OpenStack. And then standards like Tosca for pattern support and linked data to really accelerate how quickly we can integrate 
services and integrate data across a variety of systems. So this is this base level of open technologies and open standards is what will make the, the hybrid dynamic environment a reality. And they are a reality. A couple examples. I want to go through just three quick examples that we see over and over again um, as patterns with customers in this um, open cloud environment in the ability to rapidly construct applications to deliver in this hybrid environment. One of the patterns that comes up over and over again with enterprises in particular is how do I pull together the optimizations and the flexibility of the underlying infrastructure with the full life cycle of DevOps? And here what we see is the ability to through OpenStack and orchestration and patterns, the ability to deploy patterns down into an OpenStack environment on public and private environments. And then the ability to integrate those optimizations of the infrastructure with the full lifecycle. In this example, with Urban Code, which helps manage the application artifacts, helps you model your applications, helps you govern and track and deploy the application artifacts into these environments. So this really accelerates how quickly you can put together a DevOps model, the full life cycle, with the optimizations of the infrastructure. A great example of this is a company that I just met with last week and had, we had been working with them for a while now, Novatech. Novatech is a German company, consultants, and they work with a lot of clients on building this type of an environment. They also put together a very leading edge application, a mobile application for fleets and automobile manufacturers in Germany. What it does is it optimize routes and, and scheduling of refilling at, at stations by bringing together the route um, schedules along with the price of fuel throughout the country. And they brought this together in a mobile application. And what they were after is how could I very rapidly deploy this application into public clouds as well as into private environments for particular partners? And then how could I manage it through the life cycle? And here, what we worked with them on is how to pull, how to model their application using TASCA, uh, the Topology and Orchestration Specification in OASIS, then interpret that through an orchestrator, and then deploy that, optimize that deployment into the various environments. In literally two days, they were able to use some of the open source technologies for modeling their application with TASCA and then use the orchestrator to successfully deploy and manage this application, uh, this workload in, in a public cloud. And then in the morning, they brought in our management systems as a service, and they were able to get the full instrumentation, the monitoring instrumentation for that workload. So very compelling and a very common uh, pattern. Another example is with telcos. Many telcos around the world, what they're looking at doing is creating an open cloud platform but then making available to developers many of the core network patterns, many of the core network functions. So again, we spent a lot of time on the pattern technology and with orchestration running on OpenStack to, provide, to make these types of capabilities available to their communities, to their customers, to their developers. And another example is within the heat and hot projects with Tosca. We have a lot of customers that are really focused on how to create interoperability and how to better manage their workloads across clouds. So a lot of interest in the specification in OASIS referred to as TASCA. This allows them to basically model the topology, the nodes and relationships, as well as the plans. How do I deploy this? How do I activate it? How do I add and remove nodes? How do I put it in an HA or backup recovery mode? So this allows them to manage their workload across its life cycle and also a level of interoperability across clouds. So working collaboratively in the HEAT uh, project, we've been working on how to use subsets of Tusca. What, what, what makes sense of Tusca in HOT? And so that's one of the projects that we're actively engaged in. And one of the early technologies we developed is basically a translator from Tusca into the HOT templates. And so 
it's open source technology now available so that we can start accelerating the ecosystem in use of the hot pattern or heat, heat pattern engine through the Tosca specification and the use of Tosca. So Angel, would you like to go on to what's next? Yeah, sure, absolutely, thank you. Are you guys hungry? Because I'm actually pretty hungry. You're hungry. Yeah. Anyone bring a sandwich or a protein bar or something? Coffee? You got something in there, Brad. You don't, you don't leave home without a protein bar. You got, you got Chick-fil-A in that pocket, don't you? Anyone from North Carolina? You got Chick-fil-A's? All right, sorry. This is not the topic of our dialogue. I digress. This is being recorded, too, so we got to tone it down, guys. So, uh, look, a couple minutes here. Uh, about five minutes, ten minutes or so, just to close things out. But I want to put in perspective a couple of things that Dave mentioned grounded in reality. When he, when he, when he was talking about the examples of how a lot of our clients and how, how of you all are using OpenStack, it's, it's amazing because as, as Dave was speaking, I was thinking about different layers of this kind of cloud architecture that's emerging, whether it's open hardware, software-defined environments through networking, compute, storage, whether it's you know, infrastructure as a service with OpenStack, whether it's dealing with open platform as a service or, or architecturally dealing with how humans interact, you know, think Horizon, for example, with, with, with uh, the technology. At each one of these layers, you want to make sure you have freedom of choice and freedom of interoperability. Because the reality is, in, in the DevOps example, you've got many different tools. You ain't gonna, you know, if you've got something you've been using in your environment, set of scripts for, you know, 10 years, you're not gonna change that. How do you bring that into your world to deal with your OpenStack environment, right? If, if, if you're in the platform layer, right, and you're building an application, you've been doing J2EE development, well, okay, fine, that works for you. But what happens if you wanna start bringing in something like Go or Ruby or, you know, how do you bring those worlds together, right? Or if you're building an application in, in a world that is ever increasingly mobile, how many of you are holding your mobile phones right now this second? Raise your hand. Yeah, you see? You're like attached. It's like the pacifier, right? It, trust me, for me, I, I don't have it next to me and I feel really anxious, right? But, but, but think about it. You know, you're developing an app for your mobile phone, right? You want to be able to develop an app that could be cross-device, HTML5, IBM co-chairs HTML5, right? We care about these things. Uh, and I'll tell you why in a second. And, and, and you know, if, if it takes two weeks to update your app, it's not a simple push of an HTML file, right? This is not good. You're not competitive in the marketplace. So you want interoperability across these layers, but the future is not just interoperability across those, it is uh, across each horizontal layer, layer it's vertically. Okay, going from top to bottom. Is how do you start to set policies? So when you look at a lot of the work that we're going to be doing in OpenStack moving forward, it's not just doing the good things that we're doing, but understanding, you know, how does an OAuth that comes in, Brad, right, in Keystone, that comes in from uh, authentication, how does that impact not just OpenStack, but the hardware and the power systems that support it, right? How do you have those policies propagated? Uh, if you have an application that requires a certain amount of bandwidth, right, and you want to secure that at the, at, at the application layer. How do you specify that as a policy that goes into this definition that Dave talked about called Tosca, right, which then can go through Neutron into, you know, a software-defined environment so that the network could be stood up and support that. You see what I'm saying? Those are the use cases that we as an industry are now evolving to, and that's exciting, right? It's exciting because it's not just interoperability across here, it's interoperability from top to bottom. So one of the key pieces that we're really super excited about and proud about, and if you haven't heard about it, please check it out and get involved, is, uh, is Cloud Foundry. Uh, this is, uh, the way I like to think about this uh, is cookies and a cookie jar, okay? Uh, has anybody, now I asked you the question about mobile. Has, has anybody eaten a cookie like around eight or nine after dinner, although they shouldn't have? You're lying. Raise your hand. <laughs> no. If not, you're just intense, because I, I, I am constantly dipping, right? So Cloud Foundry is like a cookie jar, okay? Think of that as the fabric that holds cookies. Cookies are runtime, services, application code. And you have all kinds of different cookies in the cookie jar. And you want to be able to bring cookies from other people's cookie jars into your cookie jar. So if you have an open cookie jar 
then you can build applications that span on-premise, off-premise, and in between, and allow an ecosystem of cookies to participate in that jar. And if that cookie jar, by the way, is able to communicate policy into something like, say, OpenStack, right, then all of a sudden now, you have an elastic environment right, that spans compute, storage, and network that support your applications. Isn't that beautiful? That's beautiful. So that's kind of what we're trying to do. So if you look at uh, the Platinum members, the folks that are helping uh, stand up this organization. It's not up yet. <laughs> this is kind of like what we do with OpenStack. We announce we're going to go do it, right? And there's a whole bunch of gold members that have just signed up, just like in OpenStack, and this kind of this momentum is growing. Uh, I, we have a conference coming up in June in San Francisco, and then we've got uh, June 9th. Uh, and then hopefully around the September time frame, we'll kind of be up and running. But a lot of the folks here are the same folks that, that kind of helped with this, with this OpenStack phenomenon. So if you're not involved, uh, and would like to, would love to have you, because there's going to be a lot of work that we're going to try to do to make sure that, that this stuff works well with OpenStack, and then also the use cases that I just described, these policies, et cetera, needs to flow from the application down to these foundational services, can actually be honored and dealt with uh, in the OpenStack world. So as we look ahead, I mean, that was really fast, but hopefully you guys got those examples. Right? Uh, as we look ahead to uh, Juno, and by the way, do you know who rocks OpenStack? We have t-shirts <laughs> It says IBM, you know, do you know who rocks OpenStack? Yeah. Oh, there you go. Yeah. So please take a t-shirt and a way out. If, if we don't have them here, come to our booth. I'm sure we've got a ton of them. Um, there's certain areas we're going to focus on. So first of all, heat and hot, very important, right? Defining, you know, from at an atomic level, workloads, being able to orchestrate workloads. But what's also very important about this is that this is the place where you'll start to set some of these policies as well, right? These policies that can propagate from the user to the platform developer down to the infrastructure to the hardware. Solometer, very important, keeping and logging and all that information so you can do this. And, and I think, you know, in my head, there's a, there's a strong synergy between Horizon and Solometer. Look, you need to have an open user interface to deal with and instrument and manage OpenStack. Because by the way, the only, you know, admin console, the only UIs ain't going to be open stack. It's going to be a whole heterogeneous set of stuff that's out there. So how do you create an open kind of, kind of world around that? I thought someone had a question, this guys in the back. <laughs> they're, 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 they're scheming with ways to turn off my presentation again. <laughs> I've had it too easy. Um, obviously, we'll continue with internationalization, internationalization and also RefStack. Uh, Todd, who's, who's uh, on the board and with us from IBM over here, uh, has done quite a bit of work, and Andrew, his team out in California, uh, building test suites. This is when you know a technology, right, has kind of entered its own, where folks are willing to stand up and say, all right, bring it. Bring the test suites. Let's do some interoperability, right? That, then you'll get that HTTP effect. You know, you know what I mean by that? When you type in HTTP in a web browser, you're not worried about your, whether or not you're going to get the answer back, because all application servers use the Apache HTTP code in it today, right? And they're not worried about that. They run the interoperability test. That's the effect that you're going to start to get here. So a couple sessions to guide you. Um, and you're hurrying off to one, I'm sure. <laughs> uh, Todd is going to, is going to talk uh, quite a bit about uh, what we specifically are doing in OpenStack and some of the different areas that, that we're in and, and, and some of the stuff that's happening at the board level as well. Uh, we have a great discussion around examples of what we're doing with clients. That is always very important to understand the enterprise characteristics that OpenStack serves well and some of the things that we're still working on, and also some of the stuff that we have going on in our soft layer uh, platform, which is our very robust and, and uh, kind of you know, public cloud. Uh, there's also a whole series of technical sessions that we're leading. Uh, they are <laughs> packed to the gills. Uh, and hopefully you all can, can find time to go some, through some of these. They are focused on the areas that I just spoke about, right? Heat, hot, solometer, keystone, et cetera, right? So those are a lot of the areas that you'll see. So let me just leave you with three instruments, uh, three instruments, <laughs> three thoughts here, and it's about playing. The first thing, I always say this at every OpenStack summit, every conference back since 2011 or so, we love working with the community. Everything that we do, all of our contributions, we do with others, with you all. So if there's an area that we're working on that you're interested in, give us a call, right? And let's work together uh, in the community. 
If there's an area that we're not in and that you think we should be, let us know. We'd love to hear the requirements and the use case. Don't be afraid, if you're newer, right, to just pick up the code and use it. Get a distribution, whatever, right? Just use it, play with it, okay? That is the best way of getting started because you're not alone, okay? The ecosystem is very healthy. Folks are always willing to help, okay? And there's been many, many use cases of this stuff implemented, as you've seen today. Uh, and, and, and so getting started and knowing where to start is not that hard. So with that, thank you so much for attending. I really, really appreciate it, and I'll see you at the sessions in the week. Take care.